Hallelujah. Praise be Jehovah who set it on high and looked low unto the earth and satisfy his children. I thank God for this very hour, the hour of divine inspiration. And I bless God that you are there waiting for the word of God to be preached unto you. Uh, before we bow down our heads in prayer, I want to give honor to the directorship of this very studio, Mr. Ragu and Mr. Sebastian and Sister Malani for the great work they've put together for the coverage of this very uh, um, episode. And I thank God that someone is going to be blessed today. Hallelujah. Bow down your heads even as we share a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I give you praise for the lives of many out there who are listening to the sound of my voice. And I pray that today they shall be blessed beyond measures. They shall be blessed beyond curse. And I pray that, oh God, Father, by the time this very message will come to an end, you will bless someone and there will be peace in the life of your people. I thank you and I give you praise in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to just call a brother, call a sister, call a friend, call a mother or uncle, a father, and let them understand that the hour of divine inspiration is set. Hallelujah. Today, I'm going to take my time to teach you on a very important subject I have entitled, The Four Major Keys to Your Personal Peace. Hallelujah. Four Major Keys to Your Personal Peace. Now, when you look at how the globe is all the how how the world is being structured at this very moment you realize that there is no peace anywhere there is no peace in the country you live in because either the country is going through recession or maybe is going down the drain there is so many chaos either there is tsunami here or people are dying here there's so much accident all over the world there is so much chaos around the world and when you look around you there is no peace and you can't find any peace anywhere except you have contacted the supreme power of jehovah god hallelujah and i want to teach you how you'll be able to have a how you'll be able to have a personal peaceful life in your environment in your work in your academic in your family life in your in your marriage in everything that you do because you need peace without peace it doesn't matter the dozens of money that you receive if you don't have peace you will not be able to enjoy it hallelujah and today i want you to understand that before you'll be able to experience peace in your life there are four major keys that you got to understand so that as you 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 get acclimatized to these very four principles or four major uh, um, keys you'll be able to do well in life and you have peace hallelujah uh, uh let me just enunciate these four keys to your personal revival that will bring peace of God in your life. Child of God, you don't need anything apart from the peace of God. Hallelujah. For the Bible says that the the, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord also is your strength. We know the, 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 the peace of God on your life, there is no way you'll be able to have any strength. Hallelujah. You need the strength to get to your next level. You need strength to do what you have been assigned to do. And before you come up, into contact with this very strength that I am talking about, you have to have peace in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I believe with all my heart that if these keys are worked out, it will bring you a permanent peace.
days. Oh my God. And we, 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 everyone is going through one way or the other. Either in your marriage, either in your finances, either in your family, either at your workplace, either in your career. There are so many things that is going on there that you need the peace of God that surpasses all understanding in the very areas of your life so that you'll be able to become an achiever. Hallelujah. And today we're going to look into certain scriptures uh, we're going to read a scripture in john and we will read one in philippians and also we go to colossians hallelujah but one thing i want you to understand four major keys that you need to experience or to overcome in none that you have the peace of god i mean we are all facing up to and dealing with what we call the fear of man hallelujah the fear of man there are some people they are not able to do anything because of the fear of man hallelujah and child of god let me tell you something if someone terrorizes your life either physically or spiritually you will never have no peace Imagine you have dressed up early in the morning, gone to work, and as soon as you get to work, you meet your boss who dislike you, and because you are so much in fear, you will not be able to have any peace at that workplace. But child of God, God has not given us the spirit of fear. He hasn't given us what to fear man, but he has given us love and sanity of mind. He has given us power to be able to overcome any kind of human fear. If you entertain any human fear in your heart, you will not be able to do anything. Hallelujah. So number one thing I'm going to talk about is the fear of man. And number two, we also will look at the, the having a genuine Bible kind of love for people. Hallelujah. When you don't have a genuine love for people, there is no way you will be able to experience a personal peace. Hallelujah. And number three is also knowing the voice of God. Knowing the voice of God. As a child of God, it is very imperative. It is very important. It is very paramount that you'll be able to recognize the voice of God. Why? Because the voice of God will usher you into your destiny hallelujah it is said that the future is unknown the future is only known to God it's only God that knows your final destination hallelujah it is only God that can appropriate your steps for the Bible says that the steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord hallelujah but how can the steps of a righteous man be ordered by God unless the righteous man is able to acknowledge and recognize the voice of God. Hallelujah. Many people are working in this very end time, in this very 21st century, and they are not able to recognize or differentiate between God talking to them or themselves talking to themselves or Satan talking to them. Hallelujah. And if you're a child of God and you're not able to bridge between God speaking to you and you talking to yourself or, 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 or Satan ministering to you when you, the voice of God speaks or when God speaks to you you may take it as if it is you talking to yourself or you may take it as if the devil is talking to you haven't you read in the scripture that the Bible says that uh, the, 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 Satan can also present himself like, as, that, like an angel of light hallelujah so Satan also can speak to you as God is speaking to you so you must be able as a child of God be able to understand and recognize when God is talking to you and when you are talking to yourself and when Satan is also talking to you hallelujah stay tuned you're gonna be blessed in a minute hallelujah stay with me and the last but not the least too that you have to also come in contact with is called the obedience unto God the obedience unto God most of the problems we face in life are somehow connected to these four keys 
Hallelujah. Either we are in the fear of man or we are not able to recognize the voice of God. So many people, when they end up in problem, they begin to ask God, where are you? Uh, if God is really there, why is this thing happening to me? But let me tell you something. The Bible says God will not do anything except he has revealed to his servant, the prophet. Hallelujah. And in this end time, it is not anyone that has been discreet. Uh, 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 consecrated or designated to be called a prophet every child of God has the mandate to hear from the word of God every child of God had the capacity and ability to hear from God hallelujah so when God is saying he will not do anything until he has revealed to his servant the prophet he is not talking about the old time prophet he is not talking about Elisha he is not talking about Elijah he is not talking about Jeremiah he's not talking about about John who went to Patmos but he is talking to you hallelujah you are a holy nation you are a peculiar people person you are a royal priesthood you are a prophet hallelujah therefore God will not do anything except he has spoken to you but let me tell you something Job said something he said once God has spoken but twice men perceive it not so God can speak, but it is up to us to be able to recognize the voice of God. And this is what I'm going to talk about. It's very, very important. And if you stay with me, within 15 minutes or so, I'll be through and you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. And you'll be able to recognize the voice of God. Hallelujah. Uh, if you can be able to overcome all these things, four keys there is no way you will have peace in your life we are we are tiny in our christian growth and and ineffectiveness be, before god because we are afraid of what others may say or think about us hallelujah sometimes because of fear of man you are not able to do what you're supposed to do why because you are thinking of what will people say you are thinking of what will people do you are thinking of how they will size you up how they will measure you and because of that for the fear of man a lot of people are not able to get to their promised land a lot of people are not able to get to their final destination a lot of people are not able to start their business a lot of people are not able to accomplish that marriage a lot of people are not able to marry the bone of their bone and the right person for their life why because of fear of man hallelujah oh glory be to god but today i charge you in the mighty name of jesus why that you will not fear man because only God shall we fear no man don't let the fear of man terrorize you don't let the fear of man push you outside your your your, your God-given purpose and your God-given talent if God says you should do it don't look at what man would do because man doesn't reward you it takes God to reward you haven't you read the scripture that says that behold I am coming and I hold my reward according to your deeds hallelujah so Jesus is saying that he is coming and he has the reward to give to everyone that has performed a certain kind of duty that he gave to them. Hallelujah. Child of God, if you wait on what man will say, if you wait on what man will do, if you wait on what, what man will tell you, you will definitely fail. But God has not destined you to fail. A blessed man, the Bible says that uh, a righteous man shall fall seven times my God but he shall get up again he said when I sit in darkness Jehovah is my light my God your light is not in man but your light is in Jehovah he is the only one that can speak it to be for he calleth things that are not as though they were hallelujah glory be to God don't fear man don't fear any entity don't fear nobody but only God shall you fear the Bible say fear no man but only God shall you fear David said, if God be for me, who 
whom shall I be afraid of? Hallelujah. If God be for you in that business, uh, who is a man uh, that you should be afraid of? Uh, if God says yes, uh, who can say no? If God opens it, who can shut it? For he said in Revelation chapter number 3, the verse of 8, he said, Behold, I set an open door that no man can shut it. Hallelujah. If there is any fear that you need in your life, you need the fear of God. Why? Because the Bible says uh, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I shall not fear man. I want you to declare wherever you are under the sound of my voice. Say, I shall not fear. I shall not be afraid of what man can do to me. For God, if God be for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. And, 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 and we struggle in the area of relating well to others and other Christians and people in general because we often don't know how to love. Hallelujah. Oh my God, did you hear that? We struggle in the areas of relationship even even among Christians and other people in general because we often don't know even how to love hallelujah and if you don't know how to love you will never get no love and if you don't get no love you will not have no peace hallelujah because it will be like everybody is against you it will be like the whole world is coming at you it will be like everybody hates you but it's not because everybody hates you it's because you haven't taken your time number one to love yourself and know how to love others so that whatever you give out you receive it hallelujah bible says it's a blessing to give than to receive why because the more you give the bible says that men will give unto your bosom press down shake it together will men give unto to you he's not talking about only financially he's talking about whatever you give hallelujah when you give love out men will give you love back hallelujah but many people don't know how to love and if you don't know how to love it is very 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 crucial for you to experience a personal peace hallelujah oh my god we spend we spend our lives doubting the voice of god because we don't, we won't put the voice of God to test. Why? To prove whether it's really God speaking to us or our own mind speaking to us or the devil speaking to us. Many a times when, God, when we hear a voice in our minds, listen, God will not come from heavenly. Child of God, listen to this statement very carefully. God will not descend from the clouds and shout and say, my son, my son, I am God and I have come to speak to you. No, your mind is the battlefield. Your mind is the place, is the organ, is the ability, is God's wisdom a place that he speaks unto you. If God will speak, he will not speak from anywhere. He will speak through the mind. Hallelujah. But the problem we have is that we struggle to recognize whether it is God speaking or it is ourselves speaking to us or it is the Satan speaking to us. Why? Because when we hear a voice, we don't put that voice to test. Hallelujah. But if God has spoken, he will surely do it. Child of God, if God says it, he will surely do it. When he has said it, it will come to pass. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Shall it, shall it not spring up? Shall you not see it? Shall you not know it? Behold, I will do a new thing. So once God says, I will do a new thing, child of God, I want to assure you, he will do it. He will do it. Therefore, when you hear the voice, you got to put it into touch to verify whether it is God speaking or it is your own mind speaking or the devil speaking to you. If we don't get the first three principles worked out in our Christian journey, then the fourth one, which is called obedience unto God, will continue to be in the dreaming world hallelujah because if you don't if you don't 
understand how to overcome the fear of man and also how to love and also how to hear the voice of God how can you obey God but Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice and many Christians are lacking the element of obedience why because we are not disciplined enough to know that once God has said it he will definitely do it hallelujah have you read Genesis chapter 12 the verse of 1 it is called the call of Abraham when Abraham was in the midst of his family on the land of his father and God came and said Abraham I want you to go from this very place leave your mother's leave your father's house leave your father's country leave your your kindred and go to a place that I will show you. Abraham didn't hesitate to obey the voice of God instantaneously. Abraham picked himself up, picked his wife up, and picked his nephew Lot, and they departed. Why? Because God has spoken. Hallelujah. It is very important for you to understand that when God speaks, you only have to obey it. There is nothing called excuses. When God says it, you don't have no excuses to challenge God because He is the ultimate. He is the superior. He is the supremo. He is the architect of the universe, the maker of the heavens and the earth. He is indisputable. Indispute, he is indisputable. He is insatiable. He is someone that you cannot phantom his mind or he cannot phantom his ideologies. God doesn't move by feelings. He doesn't move by emotions. So it doesn't matter when you disobey God, you will have a, rec a repercussion on why you disobey God. And it doesn't, it won't take the emotions to take that thing off. Hallelujah. The Bible says something about a man called King Saul. When King Saul, there was a fight between the Philistines and the, the, the Israelites. And the Bible says that God told Saul, when you go kill everybody and the bible say i think it was with the amalekites and and, and so when and he killed everything and everybody but he left the king called agag and when he left Samuel, to obey is better than sacrifice child of god it is very important that we understand the obedience let's quickly go to john john chapter 14 the verse of 27 John 14, 27. Hallelujah. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. This is Jesus talking. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid hallelujah I, I, I love this very scripture it said peace I live with you it does not the worldly peace now the worldly peace come with a certain type of price oh my god the world has no peace so if jesus had said i leave you peace of the world then there is no way we'll be able to have a personal permanent peace but he did not leave a peace or the peace of the world he left his own peace jesus peace is peace hallelujah a permanent peace my god a peace that when he gives unto you he had no sorrow to it a peace that when he give unto you all burdens are being taken out he said come unto me ye that are heavily laden and i will give you rest hallelujah when jesus is talking about the peace he is talking about giving you rest he is talking about giving you strength he is talking about giving you the the, the the fulfillment of your destiny hallelujah and he said you don't have to be afraid oh child of god you want to have the permanent peace of jehovah hallelujah let us also go to philippians chapter 4 the verse of 7 hallelujah and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and your mind 
through Jesus Christ. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. It, what shall he do? It shall keep your heart. Hallelujah. There is someone that your heart is failing. There is someone that someone has disappointed you. There is someone that someone has run away from you. Your marriage has folded. It has, dis, 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 has, has, has disconnected. It has been fragmented. Oh my God. A man has run away from you and, and you seem a broken heart. I want to prescribe a medicine for you. It is called the peace of God. It surpasses all understanding. And when this peace of God comes into you, it will keep your heart. Hallelujah. Not only will it keep your heart, but it will also keep your mind. Hallelujah. Your mind will not move about. Your mind will not be corrupted. Your mind will not be will not go crazy. I know someone who whom a man has left her and now they are going through chaotic they are going through madness crazy they they, they, they have gone mad why because their marriage has folded but when the peace of god come unto you oh jesus christ you will keep your heart hallelujah and you will keep your mind hallelujah let us also go to quickly go to colossians chapter number three the verse of 15 and let the peace of god rule in your hearts let the peace of god rule in your hearts to which also ye are called one body in one body and be thankful and let the peace of god rule in your heart don't let the fear of man rule your heart don't let the desires of this world rule your heart don't let money rule your heart but let the peace of god let it rule your heart hallelujah now let, let us go into 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 more detail into into this hallelujah let us go into detail in this when we go to exodus you will realize that from the verse of chapter 10 down you will realize that when moses had gone onto the mountains to take the ten commandments he left the whole congregation two million souls in the capacity of aaron the high priest but the bible says by the time moses came down from the mountains all the congregation the assembly of the israelites were worshiping idols they have carved image of, of of a cow and they were worshiping idol they they have turned into idolatry they, that is what they knew on the land of egypt because on the land of egypt they worship different kinds of gods and god did not like it so moses said i am taking these people out from egypt so that they will go and worship god but what happened when moses had climbed onto the mountain and they left the people People with Aaron, what Aaron did was that Aaron carved them an idol, a god, and they began to worship the gods. Why? Because Aaron was fear, was scared, and was afraid of his life. Why? Because the people came at him and said, Moses has gone, and we don't know when he's coming down, but we don't know this God that has kept Moses on the mountain. But we beseech you that you give us another idol, a God that we can touch, we can feel, we can see. This God of Moses, we cannot see, we don't know him, but we know that when we were in Egypt, we used to worship a different kind of God. We want you to make us an out of fear. Aaron did a, an idol for them. I, Aaron carved another image for them to worship. Why? Because of this, God killed all the adults, all the, the big guys, he killed all of them. God allowed them to die without them getting to the promised land. Why? Because of fear of man. Hallelujah. Fear of man will not 
I, 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 I feel within me there is a student here listening to me right now. Out of fear of man, out of fear of your parent, you have not been able to choose the right career because you know that when you choose the right career, your mama wouldn't like it, your father wouldn't like it. And because of that, you are living to please them and you have chosen the career that your parent wants. But if you chose the career that your parent wants you to embark, you don't have the potential, you don't have the ability you don't have the acumen to be able to fulfill that. Why? Because you are living in the shadow of your parent. And I beseech you that you get the, the, the fear of man out of your heart. And when you do that, the divine purpose of God will be opened up to you. Hallelujah. Let me, let, me, let me take my time to teach you so that you'll be able to have a personal peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will be your portion. Hallelujah. So allow me in the next, in the next five minutes to enunciate this very word. And, and I'm not going to rush it so that you will get a deeper understanding of what I'm teaching you. If I rush it, you may not be able to understand it. I will overlap and skip so many golden nuggets which will help you to employ the peace of God in your very life. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the power of grace in this very place. 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're going to read from the verse of 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying so let the gods do to me and more also if i make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time this is jezebel the, the verse of three and when he saw that he arose and went for his life and when he saw that, and that means when he heard the voice of Jezebel, fear came into the inside of the prophet of God. Hallelujah. When you read the subsequent chapters, you will realize that the power of God has come upon Elijah. And Elijah has put to death 400 idol worshippers. They were called Baal priests or Baal prophets. He had killed all of them like a tornado. Jezebel came in the fearful manner. He, she came in the in, 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 in like a volcano eruption. My girl, thundering down at Elijah the prophet. Look at such a warrior. Look at such a powerful man of God who has stood a test of time and defended the cause of righteousness and has been able to kill 400 idol worshippers only for the next day one woman rising up to come against him against him and the man took to his wheels he he ran away from town i just prophesy that nothing will cause you to run away from your marriage oh my god nothing will cause you to run away from your work nothing will cause you to run away from your purpose nothing will cause you to run away from your your god-given destiny and god-given assignment there will not be any man coming against you there will not be any power no authority the fear of man will not come against you for you to run away from the god-given assignment you will not run away from your children you will not run away from your marriage what is it that the man is doing uh, that you don't that, that that has caused fear in the on the inside of you the man has done something that fear is coming every day anytime you see that man you feel like you want to run away from the marriage uh, anytime you you see your, your your father or your mother as a child you want to run away from home uh, my god i came here in the name of jesus uh, to prophesy and pray for you uh, that you will not die before your time because because of the fear of man, you will not be 
be like Elijah who will run away from his God given assignment because of Jezebel I speak right now wherever you are in the spirit of Jezebel coming against you like a thunder coming against it coming against you like a fire in the name of Jesus Christ may the pillar of Jehovah oh cause them to stop in the name of Jesus may you have the peace of God that will overcome the fear of man when Jezebel arise you said vengeance belongs unto God I can do nothing of my own except the Lord has given unto me but what doesn't belong to me it belongs to Elohim God and he's if he has given to me there is nothing you can do if God be for you you can if God be for you who can be against you I came here to announce to you that that marriage will not break I came here to announce to you your children will not run away from home I came here to announce to you you will complete that university I came here to announce to you you will complete that career I came here to announce to you that ministry will not fold I came here to announce to you any terrorist that is about to rise and lift his head may you bruise the head by the power of the Holy Ghost and when Elijah saw that Elijah arose you will not rise to go anywhere if you will rise you will rise like Isaiah chapter number 60 and the verse of one it said arise and shine oh my god arise and shine for thy light has come my god oh for thy light has come for thy light has come isaiah chapter 60 he said arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and grow darkness over the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee it says in the verse of 3 and the Gentiles shall, shall come to thy light and the kings to thy brightness of thy rising lift up thy eyes around about and see all that they gather to gather themselves they come to thee thy son shall come Come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed, and thy shine. Then thou shalt see and flow all together, and thy heart shall, shall fear nothing, and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The tremendous of me and effort all day shall all day from Sheba shall come they shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praise of the Lord hallelujah child of God I want you to understand if there is any rising up that you rise up you will rise up unto thy light if you shall rise up you will not rise up because of the fear of man if you shall rise up you shall not rise because of what man will do but you shall rise to the glory of God you shall rise to the multitudes of God you shall rise to the gold that is coming to you you shall come because you will flourish you shall arise because you see the salvation let's go back again first Kings glory be to God the verse of the, the, the verse of four but he himself he himself went a day's journey unto the wilderness can you imagine because of the fear of man because of the fear of Jezebel Elijah has risen and he has gone to Beersheba and he has uh, he, he, he has climbed onto the wilderness he has gone into a hideout oh my god what is making you go to hideout what is it that is making you hide your face now you, you are not of yourself you can't do that which you used to do before you can't function in the anointing that you were flowing in in some years back you can't sing like the way you used to sing you, you, you have dropped out out of university you, you have dropped out of your career why because of human being because of the fear of man but i charge you as a child of god today 
Rise up beyond the fear of man. Because Elijah could have completed his destiny. He could have completed his prophetic ministry. Had it not been, Il had it not been Jezebel. But when Jezebel ro rose up, he went into the wilderness. Child of God, wilderness experience is not good. You don't need to go there because of the fear of man. Hallelujah. Oh my God. But let me tell you something. Every, every terrorist, spiritual terrorist in the form of human being that is terrorizing you of late by the power of the Holy Ghost, may they leave that environment and may they leave you and set you free. Hallelujah. Elijah ran away because of fear of man. Let us look at something in Proverbs. Quickly, I'm bringing my message to an end. Quickly, Proverbs chapter 29, the verse of 25. Proverbs 29. The fear of man brings a snare. The fear of man brings a snare. The word snare there means trap. That means the fear of man is a trap unto your destiny. Did you hear that? The fear of man is a trap unto your destiny. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved hallelujah instead of the fear of man have the trust in god have the trust in god and when you have the trust in god god will cause everything to abound for you the fear of man i'm talking about is called the pressure of the people or agitating fear pressure of the people or agitating fear a snare is that which is used to trap animals i.e fish or birds to bring them into subjection contrary to their own will. Take for an example, a bird in a cage. Listen, the bird in the cage can fly only to the limitation of the bigness of the cage. Hallelujah. But when you free the bird from the cage and the bird is outside, the sky is its limit. But when you put him or when you put it in the cage, the only place and the length and breadth the bird can fly is within that square meter within that cage. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the fear of man is like a cage it's like a slavery it's like a trap when you fear man man will put you in slavery man will put you into servitude man will cause you not to excel in your potential why because they will detect to you how far they want you to go and how far they want you to store how low they want you to go but today i charge you in the name of jesus our rising star i charge you in the name of our lord jesus christ that you shall not fear man but your trust shall be in the lord him alone shall you trust in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah fear puts an invisible cage around us and stop us from expressing ourselves in christ-like way hallelujah Fear of man put us under pressure to do what you are not supposed to do. Hallelujah. The fear of man will make you rise, raise yourself. But the fear of God makes you humble yourself. Hallelujah. The fear of man will make you to be proud because you don't want them to see you low. You don't want them to see you uh, 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 sideline. Some of the people, because of fear of man, you have borrowed money to buy a car. You have borrowed money to build a house. You have borrowed money to go and marry. Why? Because if you don't do that, you feel like you are out of the race. You feel that people will laugh at you. But the fear of God will make you humble haven't you heard and read the bible that god says that i exalt the humble but for the proud i bring you low my god don't let the fear of man do what you are not supposed to do drive the car you're not supposed to drive marry a woman you're not supposed to marry oh my god go and and, and and hire a hotel when you know that you cannot afford my god the fear of man will always cause you to do something that is not right for you to do hallelujah 
if you raise yourself, God will also erase you. Hallelujah. Them that raise themselves, them that do them their things by themselves, they get the erasure of God. God begins to erase them. Hallelujah. Uh, let us look at something. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 15. Glory be to God. I, I feel someone is getting blessed. First Samuel chapter 15. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore he came down unto me my voice of unto the voice of the of the words of the Lord. That saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which the Amalekites did to Israel. How he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalekites and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both men and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And so gathered the people together and numbered them in Talem, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. Now, when you read down, you will realize that Saul managed to go for this war God has told him. Abide by the instruction. But guess what? Saul didn't kill everybody. I told you earlier on. So the first king made a mistake and the mistake that he made, it caused him his kingdom. It caused him his throne. Let us quickly look at something in Matthew 25, 14. And For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Oh, I love this passage. And unto one he gave five talent, to another two talent, and to another one talent, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talent went and traded with the same, and made them other five talent and likewise he, he that had received two he also gained two other but he that had received one went and dig in the earth and hid his lost money after a long time the lord of those seven cometh and reckon and reckoneth with them and so he that had received five talent came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, that delivered unto me five talent, and behold, I have gained beside them five talent more. His Lord said, Well done. Let us skip. Let us skip. Let us skip. Let us skip. Then, 24, which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. That means a wicked man. That means you are a wicked man. Reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, 25, and I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. The one that had five overcame the fear, went to trade and had five, five more. The one that had two, had two more. But the one that had one, he said, I knew that you are a hard man. I knew that you are a wicked man. I was afraid to trade. If I trade and I fail in it, and I am afraid to come and be, at, to do accounts unto you. That is the life of many of us. We are, we are so much afraid to do what we're supposed to do. And because of that, we are not able to come to the destination that God wants us to get to. When you get time, read Exodus chapter 32. And you find the story 
of Aaron carving the image for the people of Israel to worship instead of worshiping God. Because of fear of man, some can't even go to church now because of the fear of man. Let me pray for you, child of God. Even as I bring my message to an end. And come next week, I'll give you the second key. The second key is called the Bible kind of love for people. Hallelujah. You're going to be blessed. And when I, when, I, when I finish, what you don't want to miss, very important, is how to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. And the last one will blow your mind. The obedience of God. Hallelujah. So in the next three weeks, you want to stay in tune with me. On one channel, Mind Jesus TV. Hallelujah. You don't want to touch that dial because what this coverage is bringing you, oh my God, it will change and will revolutionize your life and your life will never be the same again. Let me pray for you right now. Touch the screen where you are and let me say a word of prayer for you. Touch the screen. I feel that there's someone listening to me right now. Your marriage has come to a verge of collapsing because of the fear of man. Because of what someone told you and out of the fear, you want to run away. Don't quit that marriage yet. I, I hear that someone also want to, want to drop out of the university because they feel like someone has told them the course that you're doing is not the right course and they want to leave that course and do nothing for their lives. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. So that you will not do no mistake because of the fear of man. Let's touch the screen right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand as a servant of the Most High God, as a prophet of God, and I lay in my hands right now over the people under the sound of my voice and I pray that oh God out of the fear of man many want to quit what they are doing and what is right for them to do but I pray right now for them that brother of mine I pray for that sister of mine in the name of Jesus Christ that they will rather trust the Lord and not fear man every fear of man will quit right now will disappear right now will be deleted from their hearts right now in the name name of Jesus. Let them arise to their glory. Let them arise to their light. Let them arise to their glory. Let them arise to their light. In the name of Jesus, every fear of man that has brought diseases, that has brought sickness on someone's life, in the name of Jesus, you are the burden carrier. You are the lifter of our heads. Lift up their heads in the name of Jesus Christ and let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not the peace of the world. Father, grant them peace. And let peace be still in their lives. I thank you for what you have done in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you listen to this message and you loved it, take my number on the screen and check the address that is coming on the screen. And you want to locate us right at our worship center. The, the center of inspiration and come and your life will never be the same. If you want counseling, if you want one-on-one -on -one counseling or one-to-one -one counseling, call me and let me speak the mindset of God unto you. Shalom. Same time next week. With same, same TV station. Mind Jesus TV. You cannot go wrong. Shalom. See you.